I started with a front wheel drive, now I have a rear wheel drive. Which one's better? This is goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. The end is now, and now's the end. It's been four years and I'm out of money. I'm going away because I'm out of money. If I were to build two e-bikes with the exact same specs and just balanced out the weight distribution, which one would be the better bike to ride? It'd be the rear wheel. So yeah, no need to draw that out with a bunch of fancy talk. Rear wheel wins. If front wheel drive was better, you'd be seeing it in bike shops, but you only see rear and mid drive. So, case closed. Just so you know, I actually like my front wheel drive bike better. So what's the deal with that? Both my e-bikes are Chinese kits installed on 90s American mountain bikes, and the problem with kits is they have to be universal. And they also try to be as cheap as possible. So usually, it's easier to build a front wheel drive bike, and they're easier to maintain. Where did that come from? Um... It's a world where everything could be a little better, but it gets the job done. Round one, acceleration. Front wheel drive. The motor's in front, so it feels like you're getting pulled forward. And the thing that's pulling you is also how you steer. So at low speeds, there's some caution. You don't want to accelerate too much when turning. And at high speeds, it's fine, because you're not actually turning the wheel. Hub motors have a lot of power to take off with. If you're using a low pedal assist setting, acceleration will feel controlled, but a throttle start will feel like you have to be really careful not to peel out. Because your weight affects the back wheel more than the front. This throttle goes from 0 to 100 so quickly, 80% of its movement is just empty space. So you're better off with a pedal assist start. But if you have to start going uphill, you're in traffic, trying to keep up, and you didn't downshift, then you're going to have to use the throttle. There's a technique to it, push out from a stop, lean forward to get weight on the front wheel, and just barely tap the throttle. But at the same time, if the throttle was more natural feeling, there's a delay between pressing down and acceleration happening. But this isn't about that. Rear wheel drive. On the rear, it feels like you're getting a push from behind. Lots of power, and you really feel it in the first couple miles per hour. Like, if you were drag racing with a car, you might actually win a five foot long drag race. Again, pedal assist will smooth out that start, but if you're using the throttle, you still have to have some technique. You're not gonna peel out, but supposedly if you have a lot of power, wheeling is a risk. Not a problem for me, but at the same time, I'm not slamming on the throttle from a stop. Gravel roads. Front wheel drive is horrible on gravel roads. If you lean forward, it can help with traction, but it's not a pleasant experience. It's very easy to peel out with the front wheel. Just keep pedal assist low. Rear drive is just what you would expect. It really has to do with the road. Is it smooth? How fat are your tires? Do you have suspension? Real suspension? Rear suspension? I'm not much of an off-roader, but surprisingly, I have ridden front wheel drive in the snow. All thanks to Apple Weather App. I would describe it as an extremely unpleasant experience that I never want to do again. But it was a doable thing. Front wheel drive slide is very noticeable when you're accelerating while turning because you don't actually turn. It's like you're turning right, but you're still going straight for a bit. So you just let up off the throttle. Very similar to any slippery situation. Trying to keep it as straight as possible and don't accelerate into turns. But snow isn't the real problem. Ice is the worst case scenario. Two wheels on solid ice can be an instant fall. And the more narrow the tires, the more likely the fall. So if it just rained and it's below freezing, don't do it. If it's wet out, I don't ride below 36F, because even though that lying Apple weather app says it's not below freezing, the hard surfaces could be frozen. And if it's dry out, I guess 24F is the lowest I've gone. Also, when you're done with all your snow riding, try and wash the salt off as soon as possible, 
because it will eat away at everything. Weight distribution. The best way to carry stuff on a bike is with a bike rack because it affects riding the least. A basket in the front is going to affect your steering if there's any significant weight in it, but the weight of a front drive motor will also affect your steering, so whatever. We already know rear drive is better. Really the biggest problem with e-bike kits is it's hard to get your center of gravity down low. And the more power you want, the more heavy batteries you need. If I were to design a dream commuter bike, it would have tubs for panniers with waterproof lids and the batteries would be at the bottom. Two batteries, one on each side as low as possible without scraping the ground when you're going into a turn. It would have a center kickstand at the rear so the back tire is lifted up and the weight of the bike goes on to the front tire. The way my front drive bike is, the front tire lifts up and the wheel wants to flop to one side, so I have to leave a bunch of slack in my wire so nothing gets pulled on. My rear wheel drive is light enough that I didn't need to replace the kickstand. You can also do a double kickstand with the second one at the rear if you have a heavier bike. Now this setup could be used for a front wheel drive because you've got all the weight in the rear. If it was rear drive, it would be better to put the battery up here. That's what a lot of built from the ground up e-bikes do. But at the same time, if you have beefier tires that could take the weight, I've gotten a lot of flats on the back tire of my front wheel drive. Some of it was bad luck, but also I think the extra weight is a factor. And yeah, try to get tires and tubes that are built better or go tubeless, but it's been almost 3,000 miles and no flats on the front tire. And I really need to change this front tire. We'll see if my lighter rear drive is any more prone to flats. Building and maintenance. I did front wheel drive because it's easier to install and mildly cheaper, but not by enough to really matter. These kits are universal and they give a range of measurements that they supposedly fit in, but you really don't want to be at the extremes of those ranges. Cause you're either grinding down torque nuts or you're shimming stuff and there's just more things that get in the way in the back. So by going with front wheel drive, it was an easier first bike to build because there's less precision required. But also, it's easier to take it off. If back tires are more likely to get a flat, then that's great. Less to deal with. Sometimes when I get a flat, I don't feel like dealing with it and I just take a tire off another bike. Can't do that if the flat has my motor in it. So finally, front wheel drive scores one win and rear drive is established as being better than front. But I like my front drive bike better. I'm trying to make a monkey out of you. As much as I'd love to hand build my perfect e-bike, the reality is both of these bikes are budget compromises. And have you seen the prices on some of these pre-built e-bikes? Getting reviews like that with those specs. I've seen sale prices on e-bikes that make me wonder why I would even bother building another e-bike. Existential crises aside, there's a lot of parameters that go into making an e-bike and how you use it determines how much value each one has. My front wheel drive can go faster, with more range, it has all these fancy accessories, better proportions for my size, just more comfortable to ride. But the rear wheel drive is lighter, I like having a step through frame, the gearing is a little better, it's more of a practical city bike that I can lock up to a bike rack and not worry about it getting messed with because I didn't put that much effort into it to begin with, so it's no prize. I'm just telling you my preference. It all comes down to what you're building for and how deliberate you want to be. You might be glad to have something that can move under its own power, then who cares about the rest? It's not like front wheel is unusable, I'm coming up on 3,000 miles. But if you're very specific about what you want, it becomes exponentially more work. And with these e-bike kits, you just kind of take them as they are and fix things that are technically malfunctional or tell yourself you'll do it better on the next e-bike build. But for now, I'm still getting to where I need to go with what I have. I'm going away cause I'm out of money. I'm going away to make more money. Will I be back? I can't.
Thank you. 